Hi, this is Mark. Congratulations. You have found this amazingly awesome show. Chances are you're listening to it right now on whether it's iTunes or Stitcher Radio or some other mobile app that allows you to stream this amazingly awesome show to your ear holes. And I can't stress how awesomely amazing the show really is. But did you know that you can also catch the latest episode of this show on the Tangibound Network? That's right. Go check out TangibondNetwork.com. You can look them up and you can listen to it right there. It's even mobile friendly. What more could you ask for? Which means you can pull it up on your iPhone or your Android, even your Windows phone. Yeah, who has one of those? But still, point remains. You can do it. You can do it. Check it out. TangibondNetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. Check it out. Welcome to the Wicked Radio Network. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink And life sucks all of the time so stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. Uh, my name is Jen. For those new listeners, which I'm sure there's millions and millions and millions of you joining the millions and millions of the fans already existing. No, I have a slight hyperbole problem, I guess, today. <laughs> Am I not using the word correctly, Brian? I got to look. No, you were fine. All right. Cool. Hi- hyperbole. Yep. Hyperbole. Yep. So... <laughs> As always, with me, we have Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> every week, it never, never gets old. Yeah. I, I don't do it every week. There's a couple I've uh, not done it. but <laughs> Oh, rerun. How we miss you. It wasn't rerun. Huh? Was it rerun? Nope. Was it rerun? Who was it then? It was, um... Oh, I can't think of his name now. Shoot. I can't think of the character's name. Heno, do you remember the character's I'm name? I'm totally drawing a blank. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't Raj and it wasn't Rerun. It was the other one. The one with yeah, the afro. That we looked it up once, too. Yeah, and I can't remember <laughs> his name now. <laughs> Let's just oh, move God. on. Quick, move on. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Uh, it's been an interesting week. Um, Brian and I just recorded on Sunday, so not a whole lot has happened between Sunday and today, which is Wednesday. Um, so, but uh, I will say, like from my perspective, this week has been fun. A lot of bicycle, you know, not bicycle, motorcycle riding and hanging out with people after work and all that other good jazz. Now Dan has uh, gone back to work at night. So I'm home at night now by myself again, which is an interesting switch for my anxieties. So thankfully I've got my kitty cats with me and stuff, and I've got plenty of security and all that other good stuff. But, um, yeah, Brings up a whole set of, of different anxieties when you're home alone at night. Right. For sure. Now, are you setting traps in case the uh, water bandits try to get in? The water bandits? Yeah. No? What are the water bandits? Home, home alone reference? Nothing? Oh! Sorry. That pole was a little deep for me. Sorry. Fine. 
<laughs> Damn. Well, since I've done ruined your uh, thing there, it was Dwayne that said that, by the way. Oh, it was Dwayne, Dwayne, that's yeah. it. Yeah, sorry. Dwayne. Anyway, back to your story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all Home Alone references have, uh, apply, for sure. But no, it's, um... Yeah, it just, it takes some getting used to, because he was off for about 17 days, and so now he's gone gone back, he won't be um, home at night again until Sunday, so I've got, like, another three, four days to go, so it's definitely, yeah. you know, a challenge in front of me, but not a challenge that I cannot overcome. Right. And all that good jazz. Mm -hmm. But, so that's what's happening with me. I went first this week, you guys, so... Who's going next? So, so have you created like with laundry and stuff? Have you made like a, a Dan Crow or something to like you know in like a out front or in a chair or something like that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like he comes home and you're just talking to this like mass of his you know shirts and stuff like that. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> I do have a really nice body pillow that smells like his cologne, mm. so that helps. So I can put that in, in the bed next to me. That's and less crazy though. I'm looking for something that's a little crazier, yeah. you know, like, yes, like yes, you're, you're taking crazy. like some beard clippings and just arranging them <laughs> on it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, we, we want disturb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not gone that far yet. Although the cats probably would appreciate it because I'm sure that they would lay on it and uh, <laughs> claim it as their own. Yeah. That's probably true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, uh, the cat that Brian used to have, uh, Missy, I had this giant teddy bear that I gave to her. And she loved, she would lay on that teddy bear's lap. He put a little blanket on his lap and she'd lay on the teddy bear's lap just like she would a, you know, a human being. Yeah. Whenever she didn't have a human to lay on, she could lay on her teddy bear. Yeah. She would actually so. look at it, in fact, like mm -hmm. look to that bear for the lap if it wasn't arranged just right she would look at it and look at you until you it was arranged correctly so i actually think she realized at one point that it was preferential to a human because it wasn't going to get up <laughs> so yeah at one point we called it uh they were having security meetings they, would, <laughs> they were our security team yeah and they would have security meetings makes sense right <laughs> planning uh planning to make sure we were safe yeah. for sure well, I'll go next because I, I don't have a whole lot to, to really add in, um, especially because me and Jen recorded not too long ago. It's only been a couple of days since we recorded the last one. Um, not a whole lot's happened. I went outside today and tried not to melt again. Uh, that was brutal. Um, That's quite the feat. Yeah. You know, uh, went outside, got really hot, got annoyed because some idiot parked his truck at the grocery store in like two spots. And he was kind of near the door which really irritated me because, um, you know, it, it's bad enough when somebody parks in two spots and it wasn't that he just barely got into two spots. Like this is someone who deliberately pulled across two spots and it was, it annoyed me because it's like, you know, it was a really hot day and he's kind of near the door and it's like, you know, you're taking up a spot, you know, two spots this way. Now someone else is, is another spot away from a door on a really hot day. You know, it's like if you're going to be a jerk like that, park a little further away and make, you know, put yourself out. Don't put other people out, you know, like if mm -hmm. you're going to go out of your way to be that jerk and take up two spots. But um, anyway, other than that, not a whole lot uh, really going on for me. Um, so it's been a pretty low key week. So other than just the heat, my anxiety has been running a little high because of the heat, you know, which is pretty typical. But uh, otherwise, eh, you know, just normal week. So do you have a pokey stick since you said it was a low-key type of week? No, if I'm going to make a low-key reference, it's <laughs> going to be in regards to uh, Thor. It's not going to be anything else. <laughs> For all you geeks out there, there's a little love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Hanno. That's it. That's all I got. You've been you've been gone the longest of the three of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. laying on us. How you been? No, I, 
I found this meme that that has summed up the like my last week perfectly. It says, "I've been doing a lot of whatever the bleep I want lately, and I like it." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh no, Heno's been eating nachos off his belly again. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> And I, and I put little jelly bellies right in that little <laughs> spot, right in between my chest, that little <laughs> hole spot. <laughs> nice. Then I, then I take my finger and I flick them up at my mouth. Nice. <laughs> yeah, be careful, man. Those things can hurt your teeth if you aren't careful. You know. So you can put an eye out with yeah. that. <laughs> it's good to be king. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've actually been uh, somewhat productive, I guess. I I uh, found my desk where my where my my computer studio desk. It has mm-hmm. just been covered in stuff, you know, things that I'm selling and paperwork and notes and blah blah blah. And because it hasn't really been much other than podcasting, I haven't done a whole lot there. So I finally actually started organizing and making everything so it's a useful studio again. Even like labeling stuff and hooking up my guitars where everything is where I could sit down and actually do some work. So that felt pretty good. Um, and just, but like, honestly, I'm just doing what I feel like doing at the, at the moment. And, and I realized that I needed that. I was feeling kind of pressure to be doing other things. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and that was making me want to do nothing. (laughs) Yeah, You know, you know how that is. Yep. And so, Instead, I've been doing kind of what I want, and it is actually – I've kind of just naturally, you know, to use that horrible term, organically segued into the things that I really want. You know, those shoulds are Mm -hmm. finding themselves getting accomplished without me having to put a lot of effort into it, uh, which is is kind of fun. So Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. You're actually yeah. going with the stream right now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, you know what? That's a that's a great way of putting it. That's how I feel right now. Mm-hmm. And I had a really uh, and I this doesn't probably doesn't mean a whole lot to people, but it means a it's a huge deal to me. I got a phone call from someone who I consider a friend. It's not like we get together regularly and have coffee or anything like that. It's not that kind of friendship. It's it's you know my experiences of being here the last decade. Uh, she has been part of those experiences one way or the other. And, uh, she's a really good friend of my exes. And, um, she called me last week for some, for some advice on recovery for a family member of hers. And it means so much to me to have that opportunity to help somebody. Mm Mm-hmm. Even if it's, and unfortunately, you know, I hate to say it, but most of the time, my quote unquote advice or my recommendations tend to not be very, how would I say active? They tend to be rather passive in a way yeah. because ultimately it's about that person. You know, like if yeah. somebody comes up to me and starts saying, Hey, do you know, do you think we should do an intervention? I'd be just like, no, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm... they'd be like, well, well, why not? I'm like, well, what's your plan? What are you going to do with it? They're like, I mean, do you have like rehab set up like to take them if they say, yeah, they're like, no. And I'm like, well, then don't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but in this case it was, you know, some, you know, and there was just a lot of general information and, um, you know, there's one thing that us addicts and alcoholics get really good at and, and that is lying about what we're doing you know, we'll, we'll, if, if we don't want to be pushed in a direction, we'll just fake it and lie about it and, and this and that. And so there was, there was some of that experience I was able to bring, but the the long, long and the short of this is, is, you know, there weren't a lot of people calling me there. Nobody called me and said, this is, I'm going through something with my, you know, with my my mother. Mm -hmm you know, can I ask you some questions? You know, that, I mean, other than my closest, closest friends, who of course would talk to me about what was going on in their lives, but to have somebody that I haven't probably spoken to on the phone in years, uh, seen only in passing in the last couple of years, and 
that they call me and they want to know what I think about something is just like, yes, this life is so much better than my past life. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it just to, to be able to feel useful. Um, and, and it's continuing at work too, where I've, I have the opportunity to be a sounding board for some of my coworkers and to see them actually, like my general manager was gone for like 10 days and you know, one of their, one of our, our concierge, he has been asked to take on, you know, more, he's been given more authority and he has decided to be responsible for that authority. And when my GM was gone, he really stepped up and it, it was, it's, it's fun to see people who didn't want to necessarily do something at first go for it and and feel good about it yeah not just go for it but also excel at it you know yeah excel at it and not gripe about it not you know and do it humbly like where they're just he's just coming in every day and doing the job like and doing it well and it's like noticeable and and here's someone that in the past you know he and i have always we try to lift each other all the time because we're both we both are very uh sensitive types we take on other people's feelings readily mm-hmm. and to a default you know we we can be sensitive to other people's moods and to see and and that can be that is definitely a, a, can be a hindrance and and he and I both, like I said, have had that issue, and yet to see him rising above it, it inspires me. Mm-hmm. You know, like to yeah. like, yeah, that's it. You know, it's like that's, you know, it's, and and I'm I'm gonna do a nice little segue here is uh, with what's going on in our political world today. I love being optimistic about things. Yeah, because Absolutely. there isn't a whole lot. And I don't care if you want to say that I've got rose colored glasses on right now and that my glass is half full, which typically it is. But you know what? I feel really optimistic. There might be some changes at work, but I feel optimistic about it. There may be changes in the world right now, but I feel optimistic and I want to feel optimistic. I don't want to fall into that that cesspool yeah. that is so easy to fall into right now. So if if you can't tell – I'm actually pretty kind of animated right now about life. I've been to the gym a couple times. <laughs> I went and played music last night. I tried out my new in-ear monitors. I was literally standing next to a full drum set. Drummers playing like a madman. And it was nice and quiet in my ears. Awesome. Wonderful. That's And, and that's a big deal for me because you know how, how much kind of fear I had with this whole thing about definitely. my hearing. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's like that to me, it, Hey, it was just one jam, but it's being in the solution for me. Mm-hmm. It's saying, okay, how can I still do this in a way? You know, and, and like I was telling you guys earlier, Dave and I love to talk about, you know, current events and what's going on. And he and I had a great conversation afterwards and he's the kind of guy that we can get fired up and then just stop and give each other a hug and say, hey, all right, I'll see you next week. Yeah. That's you know, awesome. That's awesome. Some, yeah. those are the friends i want right you know? and i even said it last night i said you know what i in case i don't say it enough i said thank you for being my friend i love you right that's awesome that's awesome and those so, in, yeah. in ear monitors it's awesome because even if it's you know not all the time that you're playing you know music or whatever even if it gives you you know the ability to do it once in a while or when you feel like mm-hmm. it it's still awesome that you can still include that you know when you want to you know yep that way it doesn't have to be something you feel like you you need to fear as much or you need to push further away from you. So that that's awesome, man. Yeah, especially when it's a, a passion that, yeah. that that does, you know, give me such a reward. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it does. It stinks when you have to give up something you really, you know, something you do get a lot back out of. Yeah. Or lot of I, was, I was really surprised at how well it worked. You know, and and a huge part of it is is that you have to have it has to be sound isolating to begin with. So I had to set up a microphone in the room just so he and I can talk, because you know I literally have earplugs. They're plugged into my ear, 
Mm -hmm. and they completely close off my ear canal and he could be sitting there talking to me and it's just like this muffled sound in the distance. So I set up a mic in the room, just in the room, and that allowed me to hear his drums and it also allowed us to have a conversation and it was controlled. And it was, I, I, he actually was like, how much did that cost you? Because, yeah, you, right. you know, <laughs> he's the one that's sitting behind the drum set too. It's, right. You know, he's. Sure. You know, it's doing damage. So oh, for sure, yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's not yeah, like sitting really cool. there's really you know, it's not like that's good for your ears for sure. Yeah. yeah, and 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 this comes back to that thing, like you know, I I got to listen to your guys's you know the podcast you did this mm-hmm. week, and and relating back to what you were talking about, Brian, with your experiences uh, at the the beer fest, which is, you, you know, you're you've learned. I need to think ahead. Yeah. And that's what this is about, too. And, yes, we we always talk about it, you know, as us musicians or whatever it is about where are you hearing protection, blah, 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 blah. But very few of us are very active about it. And it's like when you know, you know, like you've had an experience now where you're like, OK, I know what happens when I do this. I'm not going to do the definition of insanity, <laughs> which is repeating the same thing over and over and yeah. expecting different results. No, I'm going to do this different in a way where I'm actually taking care of myself, self-care, the whole thing, because like you even came to, you're like, you know, there's aspects of this that I can still do and have a great time. Yeah. You know, you could have easily just done the whole pity party and say, you know what? I'm never coming again and poor me. Yeah. You're like, no, not going to do that. Yeah. And and I love that. That was really inspiring. Oh, and by the way, the whole therapy thing, I, I'm going to quote right out of the movie, The Martian. Boy, that, that's a real dick punch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm quoting. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's. Yep. Oh, you know, a quick update on that is uh, uh, my therapist actually called me this week and um, the rep that she talked to said that it looks like there's a chance that a sliding scale may be like they used to just do a sliding scale. If you once your visits were used up and because I'm, you know, low income that the sliding scale would be very affordable. And, but they had changed that recently. She said that they're looking to try to put that back into place. So if that gets put back into place, then I'll be able to continue my therapy. So this may still turn out yeah this still may turn out no problem so i actually had forgotten about that i'm glad you brought that up Penno. thank you so excellent yeah we'll good see. to hear we'll see there may be still there may be a gap in between but still i'd rather you know yeah. a, a small gap i can handle you know yeah cuz again yeah. i i've been armed with some tools to deal with this in the meantime at least you know so oh that's very cool awesome i mean and i'm so glad that you're you're in a good place right now, Hanno. I mean, that's, it's really inspiring. It's, it's great to hear that. And you're making active choices, which is, I think, really important for the audience and everybody to recognize that you're actively choosing to be positive and to look at the positive and stuff. And that's, it's huge. And it's so important. We all have those choices to make. And when we can, absolutely, we should always be trying to look at the positive side of things because it just makes life easier. It really does. Mm-hmm. It just makes things so much easier. Now, I will take a moment. I want to apologize in case you've heard some extra noise on my end. Um, two things. One, I do have the air conditioner on because, quite frankly, I didn't want to completely sweat myself to death here. <laughs> so, sorry for the background fan. And if you happen to have heard some purring in the background, that, <laughs> that was Mr. Max. So he uh, he's decided to join in the podcast. He was so excited to hear Hanno in a good mood that he figured he would <laughs> share his good mood with everybody as well. So, oh, it's fun. <laughs> gotta love the fur babies. So, but no, that's that's awesome. And, you know, Sharing is such a huge part of the human experience and uh, kind of brings us to the topic today, which is social media. And social media has actually been getting a lot of flack recently for encouraging narcissism. So, which is a very interesting 
theory and in topic um, and thoughts, a lot of thoughts are being bounced around around this, especially when it comes for younger individuals, um, teenagers and, and kids who are growing up in this environment. Social media is great because it does give you a lot of instant gratification. And with the world full of instant everythings, instant gratification is awesome, but it can also be very addicting. Mm -hmm. I I think we've all experienced that at some point in our lives where you, for lack of a better word, you get a quote unquote big head when everyone's telling you how great you're doing and all this other stuff, all that positive reinforcement kind of gets in your head and, and, you know. Well, sure. Like, you know, like on social media, who doesn't love throwing an Instagram picture up and getting, you know, 50 likes on it, like immediately. Cause you know, exactly. look, everybody thinks I loves my selfie or whatever it is. My picture of a, a jerk who par- parked in two parking spots. You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is becoming quite the quite the thing. Um, I was actually even just speaking with a woman that I work with today, <clears throat> and she's got a 14 year old daughter, and she has now downgraded her daughter's phone from a smartphone to a flip phone because uh, her daughter had gotten to the point with her her their cell phone that it was almost in a addiction in fact it was an addiction for her she couldn't put it down it was distracting her from things that she needed to get done it was uh her parents couldn't control the usage even when they tried to put the parental um restraints on it she found ways of cracking it mm-hmm. and uh in, by using wi-fi and other other ways of accessing information um, she had on, I guess there's apps now for your phone that you can get to talk to people that don't look like apps. <laughs> so it's like a hidden app that you can hide from people on your phones. Oh. So, yeah, there's a lot of new technology and stuff out there for for kids to um, circumvent their parents. So to help control things... Her parents took herself, took her flip phone away, and they gave her, or gave, took her smartphone away and gave her a flip phone and said, "Break this." <laughs> <laughs> and now you can call us for rides when you need it. We can keep in touch with you at any time, and all that good jazz that phones allow. But, but <clears throat> you are not allowed to have access to the internet twenty four seven on your phone. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and it may seem harsh for some people, but I can understand it. I mean, there's just so many dangers out there. Yeah. So, but the article I found is actually from Forbes magazine, March 10th, 2016. It's, are you a social media narcissist? So social media narcissism is on the rise. Actually, before we get too far into this, let's do a quick description of what narcissism is. For, er, sorry, it'll just be another second here. And for for anyone listening, uh, the narcissism Jen's going to describe is also going to be different from clinical narcissism. Exactly. I do want to point that out. Um, there, There is a clinical version of narcissism that is essentially in the mental illness world that is a much different thing. So if, you know, um, if someone tells you that they, you know, they've gone to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, psychiatrist, and, you know, they're a narcissist or whatever, that this may be a different, you know, it still falls in the same family, but it's, it, you know, there can be a different level of it as well. Yeah, we're not we're not talking about the an actual disorder that you would find. Yes, you know, listed. Right. This is more of a general behavioral right. thing. Exactly. Yes. Again, uh, you know, don't self-diagnose. Blah blah blah. I'll get to that at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> if this is something that, um, if this is something that you feel is a really big issue. 
in your life. And when I say big issue, I mean it prevents you from doing things that you want to do. You're changing your lifestyle um, because of situations and how you're feeling. That's when you want to get professional help and get someone else involved. Yep. So narcissism is less is a less extreme version of narcissistic personality disorder. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. There it is. I didn't even know that was there, but yeah. yeah. Narcissism involves cockiness, manipulativeness, selfishness, power motives, and vanity, a love of mirrors. Related personality traits include psychopathy, mechabalism, and uh, narcissists tend to have high self-esteem. So there we go, folks. So that's narcissism that we're going to be talking about today. And as I look at my smartphone, (laughs) 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 Uh, the irony did not just escape me there. Well, there's a difference, Uh, though. You're using it as a tool for research currently. True. Exactly. I'm using it for good, not evil. Yes. (laughs) All right. Social media narcissism is Feed your ego however you need to, Jen. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> we make light, but this is actually becoming quite a problem yeah, for many people. Yeah. Uh, the team behind Psychology Today compiled research to show that millennials could be the most narcissistic generation in history. Social media is one of the en- ex- one of the biggest parts of the problem. So I can't say that word. Sorry, folks. That's not to say that everyone on social media is a narcissist, but it's where these people tend to hang out neither healthy nor likely to make you happy. It's important to address this issue if you have it, but finding out that your social media narcissist isn't always easy. This guide is going to introduce you to some of the key signs of social media narcissism. All right. Why? Why do we care? If narcissism is such a problem, why has nobody documented the negative side effects? Narcissism is not like other forms of personality disorders. And again, he's, We're using personality disorders in the very broadest stroke possible. We are not talking about clinically, clinical issues. We're talking about more of a broader topic. Narcissists may be unpleasant to be around, but they don't actually cause harm. It's become such a common trait that many narcissists move in the same circles, and so it gains an element of normality about it. So narcissism can make it difficult to make connections with people. It's so dangerous because it becomes hard to make progress in your life due to your inability to form real relationships. So instead, of, instead, social media takes over and it becomes the primary medium for building relationships. Now, I think we all have quite a few online friends who are very close, near and dear to our hearts. And hello being one for me. You know, just by coincidence, you know, he was able to come into the area, you know, for um, for a meet meet up with us. And I was able to meet him in person one time. But other than that, our friendship has always been over the interwebs. Yep. And for one, I'm very thankful I've had that opportunity because Heno is a big example, but also many other of my friends. Um, I've met through social media or I'm keeping up with them through social media. So it is little misleading to say that having social media to build relationships is an issue per se, because I think it's great in those ways. It's great because it does help you build relationships and with people that you may not have ever been able to build these relationships before with. But I think the key word in that sentence is the primary medium for building relationships. Well, it's interesting, too, because honestly, I probably use it as a primary way of building uh, relationships and friendships right now. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that is, oddly enough, because, you know, people with narcissism generally tend to have high self-esteem. And I... (laughs) I'm a very weird person because on one hand I do, but on the other hand, I don't. And, you know, so I'm very much that, but I'm, I'm a, I'm very introverted and that's why Mm -hmm. I don't build relationships outside much. So I tend to seek people on 
social media and stuff and befriend them because I don't like to go out and make friends, you know? So that's my reasoning for it. Um, and you know, but it is true over the years. That is what has happened is I have probably, I have way more conversations and know people, you know, via social media than I, I do in real life, mm -hmm. you know? And I know some of that has to do with depression because I can, on my days where I don't feel like doing anything, like where I don't want to get out of bed, I can grab my phone and I can still occasionally talk with people if I want to. I don't have to get up. I don't have to get dressed. I don't have to go, you know, I don't have to get ready, you know, any of that kind of stuff. I can just grab my phone and talk. You know, so there's an element of being able to still be part of a conversation with people. And yet uh, my depression still, you know, it's still servicing my depression. Basically, it's a weird, mm. like I said, it's a weird thing. So I don't know where that falls in there. But I, I am definitely a person who lives mostly through my social media friendships. It's it's very interesting, per you know. As Heno just said earlier, I think it might have been off air, that a lot of this stuff has just come up recently in the last 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've quite developed a way to manage it, you know, as individuals. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's tough to say what's healthy and what's not mm -hmm. when it comes to social media. You know, I I would say, you know, kind of like the, the litmus test that we use for most things is when it starts negatively affecting your your life. You're doing things that instead of going out, you're staying home to play on the Internet. Yeah. That type of stuff. That's when you need to get professional help and, and you know, get people involved, which you already have. So in your yeah. case, you know, that makes sense. You're already getting outside help and stuff for different situations you're dealing with. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. let me, let me just to play devil's advocate, uh -huh. you know, I mean, if you've got people in these situations that accept you and you know what I mean? They accept you and they'll take you as you are. Essentially. It's kind of like, I don't know. That's what you're looking for from people. You know, it's a weird thing. Like I said, you know, when I talk to people, you know, a group of people, I was in one of the, like, uh, Twitter groups I'm in. The other day, one of the guys was telling us about his, uh, his um, um, oh, shoot, I can't think what it's called now. Shoot. Um, wow. I can't think what it is. It used to be, like, multi -per multiple personality. It's called something else now. I can't think what it is. Oh, Shoot. Borderline personality disorder. That's what I was trying to think okay. of. Uh -huh. Anyway, he, you know, he has that. And as he was telling us about, you know, using mindfulness and whatnot, and he just opened up about this. And when he did that, I was like, oh, well, this is what I'm doing for my depression. And no one asked. I just volunteered that. And then in this group of people, about 10 of us were all like, oh, someone else was like, well, I'm bipolar. Oh, I'm bipolar also. Blah. And each of us started sharing things. And we realized that none of us knew this about each other, really. Then we all just started sharing this about one another. And there was zero judgment in that group. We all were just like, that's so awesome. Hey, have you tried this? Yeah, it didn't work for me. Well, this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for out of people. In my real life, I've told people I have depression and watch them look at me and go, pfft. Basically, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, why is this worse than, the, you know what I mean? So that's where a lot I have. That's where for me, it's logically I'm trying to figure out which is better or worse. You know what I mean? And that's where I think over the years, this is going to be an interesting thing for people to figure out which is better or worse for you down the road. Absolutely. And, and I think for me personally, it's finding a good balance, you know, I 100% agree that yeah. it is possible and proven that you can build wonderful, strong relationships and friendships over the interwebs. Yeah. And yeah. never meeting someone face to face. Right, right. I right. mean, people have fallen in love that way. People have, you know, saved each other. I right. mean, shoot, you talked, you know, talk to people who are on the verge of suicide, yep. never met them before in your life. Yeah. 
but you know them through the internet and they had that relationship with you and they, you guys were able to reach out and talk to each other and, and work through whatever they were going through. It's incredibly important and for sure, yeah. definitely something that's, that we need to have in our society. Yeah. It does connect us. There's no question. But I guess the question is, when does it become dangerous? And I think that's definitely going to be a personal decision, you know. Um, but you should, you should take a look at how it's affecting you and affecting your life. And, I mean, are, are you alienating others? Yeah. You know, the, the people in your face-to-face world are you alienating them are you opting out of social events and things to hang out with online people instead of incorporating them both into your life right are you choosing one or the other do you feel a a compulsion to always check your 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 emails and your social media sites and stuff like that if you don't you know update them on a regular basis is it interfering with work is it you know all of that stuff that's what you kind of really want to take a look at and see what you know see see how that fits for you well the the real rub here is that anyone that's truly starting to exhibit this type of narcissistic behavior Mm -hmm. they won't care that they're losing friendships it's It's that over this is this idea of this oh this high self-esteem yeah. And we're not just talking about having confidence. We're talking about a level of self-esteem that is distorted to the point where you don't care whether you've lost friends or not because yeah. your self-esteem is so overblown that that it, it, it no longer affects you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It no longer bothers you that that people – don't want to communicate with you that they no longer want to be connected to you and and somebody can go on forever in that way and never you know because like the way it it's so impersonal now i mean we can narcissism becomes reinforced because we are no longer face to face with people so our level of discourse changes completely than if we were face to face with somebody yeah oh, absolutely and, you know, and the same thing goes with if somebody gets upset, you know, says you, you, you know, that that hurt me or, you know, they get frustrated and angry. They block you, they whatever. And you don't even care. Well, mm-hmm. now you're in it, you know, and that's the real scary thing about about narcissism is that just like with um, addictions and mental health issues, we cannot tell the truth from the false when we're in it. Right. Yeah. You know, until something, until we hit that bottom, until something wakes us up to it, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I think a lot for me, as far as the, you know, like, like that's why last night getting together with, you know, Dave was a reminder that yes, it is very easy because I'm, I, you know, you guys have already talked about it and I'm going to throw in too. I, you know, online has always been, uh, one of my primary social mediums and I'm talking going back to AOL, yeah, you know what right? I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and you know, a, a lot for me too is the hours that I keep, you know, I tend to be a person who stays up it. all night. So yep. everybody in real, you know, in real life that I know just about is in bed. So the people who keep the hours that I do are online, you know, so yeah. because if nothing else, I can talk to people in Australia, in England, you know, I can talk to people who are just night owls or in other countries, you know, I can always find someone to talk to, you know, and like you said, going back to AOL, same idea. I used to talk to people in other countries all the time. Yeah. And, and so it, I have developed it as a tool. Some of my close friends never have. You know, one of my good friends, he has a tendency to isolate and I've suggested, you know, why don't you, you know, get involved with some online groups or blah, blah, blah. And he just goes, you know what? I just really don't know how to. And I really, I'm just uncertain, you know, and it's just never been a tool for him. For me, it's always been a very easy tool. I mean, my, you know, I've, I haven't been on Twitter for that for, for very long. It's only been a, it's been, you know, a couple of years since I started being involved in podcasts, but it didn't take me very long to you know to understand how it works and to start making connections 
mm-hmm. with it. But that's because I have experience with it, right? And and our current generation, you know, that have been around in this last 15 years since we've had smartphones, this is actually what they know. This is yeah. a primary form of communication. Even w- when they're sitting there, even though when they make connections face-to-face in school, they end up spending more time doing texting, this kind of stuff. And I'm not, I'm not making a judgment on it, whether it's yeah, good or bad. Right. It's, it's just the way it is, right? It is, absolutely. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's like you said, it's, all right, so now what are the ramifications of it? What, you know, like, so for me, I know it's easy for me to come home, pop online, and, and I mean, I can have conversations all night long. Mm. Will I will I say, hey, would you like to Skype face-to-face? No, yeah. I won't. Right. Because I like the fact that it's kind of impersonal, and I, I can multitask yeah. while I'm having a conversation, exactly. and that person doesn't know. Well, last night, getting together with an actual person, somebody that I know who's – who's when I'm the experience of us doing music together, talking together, spending three or four hours together, eating food together. There is no online experience that can, can match that. Yeah. Podcasting comes close. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still, it was a reminder last night that I can, isolate and get stuck in an online world right and 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 the question then is is then how am i utilizing that online world and that's where i think where this article is talking about is like okay i have a choice i can use it to surround myself with other people that think just like i do Mm -hmm. and reinforce that behavior pattern yeah or i could utilize it and and try to bring what you and you know what we talk about on here try to actually help people not fall into that and i do that a lot actually and i I don't want to call myself like the behavior cop (laughs) but in a lot of ways i do it i get on i'm just like well you guys are completely you know this conversation you're disregarding another human being's feelings and experiences yeah it's very (laughs) narcissistic behavior yeah definitely is Yeah. yeah You know, and so I find myself and I actually I get a lot of enjoyment out of it because in a way it's kind of like a service opportunity. <laughs> right? you know, you're right, though. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is, it's, it's such a you know, I don't think we're not definitely not going to be able to find the exact answers here for for any, you know, for anything. But I think it's a great conversation. Mm. Um, you know, yeah, it's about but, awareness. Yeah, yeah, being aware, being, you know, how often do we find ourselves across the table from a human being and we're staring at our phones? Yeah. We're choosing to be in this online world versus being active participants in the world that's well, going on around us. The thing is, though, it's like even when people are sitting across the table and they're on their phones, though, like, I, I mean, honestly, Tony and I will do it. We'll go like even mm-hmm. when we're at the bar sometimes, we'll both have our face buried in our phone and we'll be carrying a conversation on while we're both interacting with other people. And it's it's kind of where it's gone. You know, him and I are still talking. And we're having the same conversation we would have if we put our phones down, but we're also like, he'll be texting with his wife. I'm, you know, messaging someone on Twitter or whatever, you know, and it's, it's just kind of like Heno was saying, you know, where it gives you that ability to multitask. Essentially, we're just doing that. Um, But there are times where it does, and you can feel it sometimes where it becomes a distraction from the conversation you're in or it becomes more about the conver- that than it is the conversation that you're in or and those are those are the things that you're supposed to be looking for when it becomes more about that like you are using your phone and you're no longer caring like Keno said disregarding everything else yes when you start doing that that's when it should be a red flag in your head and if it yeah. and if it isn't like if you notice it and you're just like meh then basically that should be a red flag also that, Hey, maybe this is something I need to go talk to someone about because Mm. when you start disregarding and you don't care, then it can, again, I'm no doctor, but this is when you can start. This is when you might need some help. 
you know. Yeah, it's something that you can look at and say, okay, it's a question you can ask yourself. Have I been, because, you know, people love to talk about, oh, well, the internet, you know, makes us further apart because we're no longer face to face. Well, th that, yes, you can say that, but it comes down to, once again, choices. We have a choice of whether we want to connect, like, you know, Brian, you've shared about having these opportunities to connect to people and suddenly to open up about yeah. mental health issues. That's a choice to make a connection, to actually bring people closer. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we, we have that choice in there. And a lot of it is like, you know, how are you choosing to utilize this? Have you lost a connection with somebody and you didn't care about it? Yeah. Okay, if you can come up with one of those in your mind and you just you just blew that person off just because so here's the thing in person when we're when we you know whether it's coworkers or whoever it is sure every once in a while someone'll drop a red flag bomb on you, right? <laughs> yeah. They have an opinion that is so just like it is completely against and and you're shocked by it because you're you're honestly like whoa, you know, I know so much about you. I enjoy spending time with you. We do these things together, but I never knew that you were, you know, whatever it was political, religious, I, one yeah. of the big red flag hot buttons. Right. Yeah. But guess what? If, if this is somebody that you've gotten to know in person and you share activities with, chances are, it's not going to sway you. You're not going to just suddenly dump that person. Right. O mm -hmm. Online is a different deal. Very All much. of a sudden you hear like, oh, they're a blah, blah, blah supporter click ban yeah right mm -hmm. okay have you reacted that way to somebody in the past was it reasonable are you becoming calloused you know are you becoming a narcissist right where your confidence your i'm sorry your self-esteem has gotten so high that you don't need to even communicate yeah and you don't need to have tolerance and you don't need to have yeah Acceptance yeah. of Acceptance, individuality. Great word. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that is that is the toughest part because you know when you're face to face with someone, there is so much uniqueness to it. You get the body language, you get the facial expressions, you get the words, obviously and the tone of voice, and there's just a lot of extra stuff that you can get from, you know, face-to-face -face interactions that you can't get via online interactions. You know, Skype and video chats and stuff like that help because you, you can see body language and get the tone of voice, so that's definitely helpful, but it's still not going to give you the 100%, you know, experience. Right. Now, online experiences are great, too. They're just different. Yeah. But like you said, they you can be a lot more um, judicious with it. You can just kind of cut people off at the drop of a hat. Yeah. You don't like what they say? Well, Block them or just ignore them or remove them from your virtual world. Which feeds the narcissism because it allows <laughs> you to be. Yep. It allows you. King. Yep. <laughs> no, no, no. It allows you to feel less. So yeah. it allows you to be more narcissistic even because yeah. the less you feel – because really narcissism kind of fits into, like you said, into a psychopathic feeling, mm -hmm. you know. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you um, – you know, when you're you're doing that, you, you like Heno said, you know, you just look at it and you're just like, meh, nope, next, 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 mm -hmm. you know, kind of – it's very similar in a lot of ways to uh, the kind of like the swipe – mentality of uh -huh. of That's tinder dating. or online dating is that you make no connection with people you just left or right you know <laughs> it's, it's, yeah it's very much you know hot or cold that's basically mm -hmm. all it is and you don't <clears throat> since there's no connection there it's easy to just willy-nilly make decisions on people whereas mm -hmm. like you said in life you can't it, it or Heno, both of you said, you know, it's it's much harder to just cut someone out of your life because they're an X person supporter or if they have this opinion, it, you know, because you you may feel differently because they're in your life, you know, rather than like you said, if if I'm talking with someone online and they just keep 
you know, they're, they're just like this opinion, this opinion. And I'm just like, oh, enough. And I'm done with them. And, and I've done that countless times. I don't know how many times because I'm just, I'm tired of hearing it. I wouldn't do that in real life. You know, like if my cousin or something like that was like, blah, blah, I'm not just going to generally be like, hey, I'm done listening to them and just be, you know, that's it, you know. Away with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, Get out of my sight. You know, maybe I would. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't think I would. <laughs> and, and even though you're, even though you're, you're not, you're in an online environment, it, it's a virtual environment. I think that when we do that, we are practicing be- antisocial behaviors. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and that ultimately we will take those into the real world. And so yeah. I would, as a good measure, is have you, have you had, you know, like I, I would have to look at myself and say, okay, are there reactions that I have been quote unquote practicing? online that I have then actually taken into my daily life yeah, and started to react that way as well. And are they new behaviors? Right. And that's something to look at because I think it does become, I've, I've noticed it myself, like with, you know, and I've talked about it on other podcasts when I get obsessed with certain video games and if they get frustrating to me, that frustration, that that quick to react, the uh, language, the uh, you know lack of tact and grace, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. can follow me into my next day. Oh, sure, yeah, like a ha- hangover. Yeah, and th- that can't be good. Good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. I mean, these are all very important things to watch for. I mean, um, some of the points that the article makes it talks about the different people the different types of narcissism so you have the selfie specialist so these people you will see always taking selfies and always want to gain the most admiration Mm -hmm. they're easy to spot on social media because they will regularly change their profile pictures same applies to posting up on regular posting regular photos up narcissists are desperate for more admiration and a new photo tends to produce a spike of interest that gets them going so, you know, yeah. Then who that, gets tired of hearing, oh, you're so cute, you're beautiful, love this pic. Right. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's you just, can't. You just fishing. don't get tired of it. It's fishing, yeah. Who doesn't love being told that they're, you know, attractive yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it just, it, it, it's just, it's nice well, to hear. And, and it's, even gone, it it's even gone further than that because, like, mm-hmm. on Instagram, you know, it started off with, you know, everyone always, uh, you know, I don't want them to take pictures of my food. And then it went beyond that. And then it became a selfie thing. And then it went to where now there's like people do like tags on there to where someone will post something and they'll like, cause you can tag people on a picture, you know, Mm -hmm. and it'll be like, Oh, I tagged these 20 people for like, you know, um, a black and white selfie. So now all those 20 people or how many ever of them do it will also post, a black and white selfie and then they'll tag other people. So it's like you're getting other people to post selfies. So anyone in there that essentially anyone in there with, you know, that wants to be narcissistic will grab this essentially, you know, and then hmm. they're, they're doing it. So you're, you know, it's, it's feeding itself instead yeah. of just on a normal day, you might just be like, eh, I don't feel like posting a picture of myself today. And you just don't, you know, well, it's like, well, yeah. I have to like, you know, I, I've huh. known, I've known people who've told me that they get a lot of these posts a day, like tagged in a bunch, you know, a post in a day. And it's, it's really frustrating because they don't want to post them. I'm like, well, don't, well then everybody, but I'm like, so, you know, <laughs> like I rarely get tagged every once in a while, someone will tag me and I don't post a ton. So I'll be like, eh, whatever. I'll post something. Cause I haven't posted in days or something, you know? So sometimes I'll post one, you know, <laughs> and narcissist peer pressure, right? So that's what I mean is that it's, mm-hmm. it's become like, Hey, you know, it's your account, post whatever you want into a, mm. you know, now let's all post, you know, these things together kind of a thing. And right. wow. Yeah. All right. Social media war. We've all seen this. Ugh. Narcissists are characterized by the desire to be the center of attention at all times. This often leads to them coming into conflicts with others. For example, many people will weigh in with a controversial opinion only to have the eyes on them. 
This may be political, religious, or may simply be espousing gossip to the masses. The goal isn't to gain a positive response. Instead, all they want is any response whatsoever. They simply want people to notice them. Trolling. Yep. 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 That's They should have just called that trolling. Because yeah. <laughs> that is exactly what that it is. That is what it is, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the definition of trolling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oversharing. Studies have shown that people who share often on Facebook and Twitter are more likely to be narcissists. The rationale is simple, because when you share a piece of your content, you appear at the top of the news feed. Mm -hmm. Sufferers from online narcissism receive a rush because they realize that they are at the center of attention. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You know what's funny? I had had this Facebook post continue to be at the top of feeds. (laughs) Yeah, you did. Remember that one? (laughs) I do, yep. And you know what's funny? I never, ever, ever even considered that until somebody pointed it out. Uh-huh. And it, and 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 it's actually this is actually kind of rewarding to hear this because I'm just like, you know, I don't care. Like I never looked at how many comments there were, how many likes. I I just never did. I was, mm-hmm. I was actually most of the time looking at the content versus how popular popular was until somebody pointed out and said why won't this go away and then i started <laughs> laughing and i'm like you know what? you're right it won't yeah. <laughs> it, won't. It, it wasn't a badge of honor actually it no. was getting to the point where i'm like this is annoying like every, <laughs> i remember every day looking at facebook and that yeah, was at the top of my news feed and i'm like geez would this go away <laughs> way i know <laughs> the funniest part about that was henno wasn't even posting that much in it you know, no, he would I respond wasn't. occasionally, but it was mostly other people arguing with it, other people. <laughs> yeah. Carrying oh, it on. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Life is great. Narcissists have the compulsion to tell absolutely everyone about every little thing they do. They want to paint a picture of their life that their lives that is great. And this is a fine in moderation. But some narcissists will go to great lengths. Many of them will even embellish or lie about what's happening in their lives in order to gain additional attention. This can become an addiction in itself and can well lead to compulsive lying. I'm glad that that was in there about the lying because I was going to say I remember reading an article about that the people who post about how great everything is all the time generally are lying about it on Facebook. I don't mean like in life, but, in you know. Yeah. On, on social media, I should say, not Facebook, but, you know, I think the article focused on Facebook. Yeah. It's like the whole, like, they fabricate an existence that they want the world to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the the other side of it is that there are people out there who are depressed and they are part of their depression comes from they're constantly looking at, like, someone they went to high school with. And they see their Facebook updates and go, man, that's that sucks. You know, they they've got the perfect life. Look at how they're always posting how happy they are. Mm-hmm. And then in truth, that person is not that happy. And this person is constantly comparing themselves to it, which is why you should not base your happiness on someone else's happiness or, you know, you shouldn't base your happiness on someone else's life. You know, don't yeah. compare yourself to someone else. Don't compare your ins with other people's outsides thank you yeah i couldn't remember how you worded that once before that was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it it's actually sure becoming they... an old mantra yeah online. right <laughs> it's a great one it is, it is yep. absolutely a great one i mean it's a very akin when you're reading stuff on facebook take it like you would a um a celebrity media site yeah like a publicist yeah. well, that's is a great writing point. It, just like mm-hmm. a publicist is writing it yeah yep. Exactly. And just take it like a publicist is writing it, you know, and and when you read through it, I mean, I think the reverse is true as well for the good and the bad. Um, People have a tendency to over embellish the bad to get an influx of sympathy and and help and stuff. Distorted thinking worksheet. All right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There you have it. Uh, Wait, I said the secret word. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so I think it it works in both cases, the good and the bad. You're very right. So make sure that you're paying attention, especially those that you're good friends with. Um, Make sure you're paying attention and kind of read between the lines. And if you feel that there's something off, follow up with them offline. Right. preferably sure yeah definitely with them. yeah 
definitely just to reach make sure out. that they're doing okay. Yeah, or you know, just reach out to your friends off yeah, and on anyway. It's always Say, a hey, good thing. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Um, yeah, that 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 one's a really good one though, because that one you see a lot. And uh, it's funny because it depends a lot of times on what the social media platform is Mm. because I tend to be more of a Twitter person. I really don't like Facebook and, 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 but you look at the different platforms and you can really see that like people on Twitter are more like complainers. People on Facebook are more like over exaggerators, Mm -hmm. you know, you can look at it and read it that way. Instagram is kind of an in-between, but it leans more toward Facebook than it does Twitter. You know, Mm -hmm. it feels because it feels like the people who are really like used to be Facebook users kind of moved to Instagram. And a lot of them have also left their uh, Twitter accounts like they've kind of left both in the like Instagrams like they're they're in between, you Mm -hmm. know, Um, but you know, like I said, I used to see that stuff on Facebook all the time. And, and, you know, like I read posts all the time where people are, you know, this and this. And I'm like, I know better. Like, y- I, you can just see and read stuff the way people write stuff sometimes. And you're like, yeah, you're lying through your teeth, basically. Huh. But, um, so don't, like Jen said, you know, just just be careful with that. And again, as we said before, you know, don't don't compare your life to anyone else's. Just let it let it go and because again if they're a narcissist again if they have that like super redlined ego they're going to be oh yeah i'm great the world's great everything's perfect and mm-hmm. if you try to live at that level you know you're going to redline yourself so <laughs> you know right and that is as we say in salty language no bueno so yep <clears throat> no good yep so the last one is how can you deal with social media narcissism? So, social media narcissism isn't a condition in and of itself. It's a manifestation of an already existing condition. In extreme cases, a sufferer may need to visit a psychologist. For the majority of people, they just need to monitor their time on social media. So, you know, I think that's pretty much what we've been talking about up to this point, Mm -hmm. which is moderation. You know, it's a topic that's pretty much strings through every single one of our podcasts. But moderation, I think, is very big key to the whole thing. Is understanding your lifestyle, understanding, you know, the life that you're building for yourself, and recognizing the place and the role that social media needs to play in that. You know, you have the control. Make sure you balance, you know, your in your face life, I guess, and your life on social media. Make sure you have a good balance between the two and don't let either or, you know, go too crazy. Yeah. Um, they, yeah because uh, also, go ahead, Keno. I was just going to say the, the, especially if you are going to be in the dating world at some point, I really think that, that it's a, it's a, it's a real great place to end up having some pitfalls that you weren't expecting. Mm-hmm. Once again, going back to this idea that you are practicing certain behaviors, and now if you're if you really want to become active in meeting people and going on dates, you are practicing behaviors that, that are that you could be disregarding the person that's right in front of you. Yeah, there's there's a level of cynicism and sarcasm that we slather on liberally when we're on online that might not play so well <laughs> in person. Yeah. So there's that. And that, and that I really think that, you know, it's one thing if, you know, if I just want to things like, just be mindful of what you're practicing when you're at home by yourself mm-hmm. that might come you in the butt when you get out there in the real right. world well also you know that's not even where i thought you were going with that i actually was kind of thinking of uh, kind of where i've been and you know and again mine is a little different because mine you know has its roots also in uh depression but um the more that you base your you know friendships and your relationships in um online uh relationships you 
if you try to do online dating, you kind of stunt yourself, yeah. you know? So then mm-hmm. when you have to go meet someone, you kind of put yourself it, into a really awkward situation. Yeah. yeah Cause all of, yeah. Cause you, yeah, you've, you've gotten used to the virtual exchange. Yeah. You mm-hmm. are no longer comfortable with the actual exchange. Yeah, exactly. It's true. So, you know, make sure you, uh, you know, uh, keep, keep your, uh, uh, keep your skills up, you know, keep the ring rust off, if you will, you know, <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> cause otherwise awesome. when you, you know, you, like I said, you can go to sit down across from someone and you're all nerves or whatever, you know, yeah, it's, or you're right. just staring there, staring at the floor <laughs> drooling. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, can we text each other right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, you know, given the way people have kind of gotten, that might be favorable. I don't know. You know, like, let's just FaceTime at the table. That'll work. <laughs> there was a, an episode of uh, big bang theory that, um, one of the characters met a woman and she was so painfully shy. She couldn't have a conversation in face to face. So he invited her on a texting date. Mm-hmm. So they went and they had uh, dinner together or lunch together at a library where they just both sat with their phones and they texted each other back, back and forth instead of talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it was you easier know. for her. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's funny, though, because it's like you laugh at that a little bit, but then it's like taking like the context of what we talk about on this show. And yeah. if you were talking with somebody online and they went in it, like if I were and they went through that and they like that idea kind of came up i don't think i would laugh that off i would kind of be like i wouldn't i would be like you know what yeah yeah, i'd be like you know what sure let's do this because Mm -hmm. we we all have something that you know that that can make things difficult and honestly that would maybe you know if that eases you into you know a a, a conversation later or whatever hey now, if mm-hmm. that's going to be an every time thing, that's that's something to discuss. But if it's, hey, you know, that helps break the ice or at least get you past that first step, whatever, you know, I'm that mm-hmm. that's a different story. Then it's an endearing thing. It makes for a great first story and, you know, those kind of things. So, exactly. yeah. Yeah. And so there's the cool part about where we're at right now with social media in the world is. The world is now our oyster. We can meet people from all around the world. We can talk to people we never would have the opportunity to talk to before. We can build friendships and learn about different cultures and different people. And it just, it's an amazing, amazing time. Yeah. So it's with everything, (laughs) it's finding that balance. You know, it's a great asset, a great tool to be incorporated into your life. But try not to make it your whole life because that's not healthy either. You want right. to do a combination of both. Yeah, we have literally put the most powerful tool man has ever created into the hands of a monkey, and, <laughs> and we're like, yeah. and we're like, here, figure it out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we're still in the very like Heno mentioned, even though it's it's fifteen years in. That is for for terms of. Um, an evolutionary, Human development. Yeah, yeah, for development, that is so infantile, you know, yes. that it's, we're still, and technology keeps making these ridiculous leaps that at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. as we're trying to adjust, it's leaping, like not just making these little adjustments, it's leaping. And then we're like, oh, uh, okay. And then we have to make this, you know, massive adjustment mm-hmm. at the same time. So, you know, we're trying to socially adjust at the same time. The technology is just making these crazy leaps with us. So, it, you know, it's going to be very awkward in a lot of ways. And unfortunately, sometimes the the worst stuff kind of rises to the top really fast during that time. You know, and we have to kind of like Jen said, you know, we have to kind of try to balance that back out so that it's not so bad. But, you know, like we said in there, you know, if you listen to the, like, look for those things. If you can see those red flags, like I had said earlier, if you realize that you're seeing something and you don't care, go seek out help, you know, or or at least talk to somebody. Because maybe, you know, maybe you just, sometimes it isn't that you need like a long-term care. Sometimes you just need a little tweak, you know, you just need an alignment, you know. <laughs> yeah, like you're feeling, you're feeling disconnected right now, you know. I yep. just, I need to reconnect a little. Exactly. And, you know, I, I go through that a lot. I, I run in cycles where I, I have a real issue with disconnect. 
even with me talking with people online, I run through cycles where I'll go days where I just, I'll completely basically pull away and just not want to talk to anyone in real life or online. And then all of a sudden I'll be back to where I'm completely like throwing myself back in. And I've tried to force myself in these groups that I'm in to talk with people and not let myself disconnect because I'm trying to force myself to, to stay connected in these relationships I'm forming, Yeah, you know, because I know that I have an issue with disconnecting and I have for a long time. So I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to use, like Henna was saying, you know, we can take these things and then apply them to our real life. I'm kind of using this as a training tool so that maybe I can in my real life, make sure that, you know, and go, Hey, this is where you're disconnecting and work on that, you know? Mm -hmm. So another step. I've had to like, um, I pretty much had to give myself a Twitter timeout because I got myself way too far in deep with Twitter. In fact, I had to like cancel one of my accounts open a new one and start afresh which a lot of people do you know mm-hmm. uh, there are a I lot of people that do too it too deep and i it was too consuming and like i was you know even having to check throughout work and stuff mm-hmm. and and i just was no it was too much yep so it was negatively affecting my life so i had to take a step back and reassess and say okay where do we need to be with this well and it makes sense you know because uh mm-hmm. you get whether it's in ver- whether it's in um, messages from people or it's you post a tweet and you're getting uh, retweets or likes uh, on there, you know either way you're getting an ego boost. So you know people tend to they keep picking up their phones because they 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 want that that fix. You know, <laughs> so Instant gratification. Yep, is exactly. An awesome thing. Yeah, it's something. All right. well with that i think we're gonna call it a night um if you want to continue the conversation please contact me Uh oh okay no you're fine he's making faces at me no i wasn't (laughs) all right so contact me on twitter at jen's crazy life and that's jen with a g um you can also contact us on at our website at the crazy life podcast dot dot com you can also shoot us an email at the crazy life podcast at outlook dot com and Hanno, how can they reach you you can find me on twitter at ida Heno, and you can find me on facebook at Heno heiter and uh that's it's funny it's like i keep my twitter to usually light fun you know promoting podcasts that kind of stuff and my facebook is where i dive into politics so <laughs> nice yep. well that's why i mean a lot of people do that kind of stuff you know like they keep the two very separate like my twitter is completely ridiculous my I, but i do also post stuff about mental health on there also because some of my tweets are about depression and various stuff and then like my facebook i post stuff about mental health and then promote podcasts but that's about all i do i really don't do much else with my facebook you know so you know it, it is interesting how so many people keep things different you know from the mm-hmm. format they use them for as different tools you know um you can also see when uh, we put up new episodes of the show on Twitter at the crazy life pod, uh, or as you know, if you want to check out the show's Facebook group, you can find us at facebook.com slash groups slash crazy life pod. Uh, and while you're there, actually, uh, if you join that group, we have a great list of um, uh, resources, you know, like if you ever need any help or like help finding a therapist or we've got some great stuff for uh, uh, on there about just different resources for uh, support groups and stuff like that um, that I've kind of put together. As I stumble on stuff, I try to add to it as as I uh, as I can. So that's definitely something you should check out. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Stunami. The other podcast I'm part of, Salty Language, which is not safe for work is at salty underscore language, or you can find that show at saltylanguage.com. Uh, we're part of two networks, the Tangentbound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com, and the Wicked Radio Network, which can be found at wickedradionetwork.com. Uh, if you, however it is that you found us, whether it's iTunes or Stitcher, please make sure that you um, rate, review, and subscribe uh, so that we can be found easier by other people, and then maybe we can you know, help 
others out or they can just be entertained by you know our shenanigans and then of course uh the next step which is uh you know we're not doctors or therapists or trained professionals of any kind this show should not be considered a substitute for therapy and please do not self-diagnose if you think you need help please seek out a medical professional and get the help that you need um and uh then also if you're planning uh suicide or you're thinking about suicide please do not do that uh contact if you have a therapist contact your therapist or contact 911 tell them you're having a mental health emergency call uh the suicide prevention hotline number um you know or um ooh i forgot the other thing i usually say here wow i'm blanking um, but anyway, or again, we have resources on the Facebook group, contact me. I can put you in, you know, touch with some stuff like that. Uh, just don't be alone. Uh, you know, and please don't act on those feelings. You can, uh, you know, if, if you want to find help, there's help out there for you. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, everybody stay safe, have a great week and, uh, keep breathing.